Hi everyone, today we are tackling a Christmas classic, the winter wreath. So we're going to paint all kinds of foliage that you might find in the winter. So grab your paints and let's get started. I've been having a think about how to create a Christmas wreath with a little bit of a difference. Um, it's something I paint a lot of, it's something there are tons of wonderful examples of out there and I always love to try and bring you an original slant when I paint a tutorial. So today, for today's Christmas wreath, I'm going to do one that layers up colours uh, starting with a really, really translucent pale layer because the thing I love about Christmas wreaths is how wonderfully abundant they feel and, th and full and thick and everything, but from experience, it takes an absolute age to paint a really full and abundant one. So I'm going to try out something today. Um, so I'm going to begin with a pale starting layer. I'm just putting in some branches that are going to be pine branches. Um, but I really don't want too much colour on these. could probably have even less colour than I've got on at the moment. Oh, that's a bit better. So I'm painting in very, very simple, sort of loose watercolour pine needles using a very dilute mix of a green, cobalt turquoise, sap green and burnt sienna. And I really don't want much colour on this at all. I'm using a size 2 brush and it is just about working quite well. Um, but you could go even smaller for even more control. Okay, so I'm going to fill up my wreath with these really, really dilute pine needle branches to begin with. So this very pale, delicate wreath is perfect for us to start layering up stronger colours on. And I should also say that um, if you've not done a wreath before, I achieved a, a pencil circle as my template to start off with just by using a compass, but you could always find something round to draw round, um, but that's all you need to start off with. Okay, so the next slightly maverick step is I've got some yellow ochre and I am just going to splatter it gently using a size, what have I got, it's got a size 4 brush. The yellow ochre is quite um, dilute. I'm holding the brush fairly close to the page. I'm just trying to get my splatters to sort of follow the, follow the Christmas wreath round. Lovely. Oh, I'm pleased with that. I like that a lot. It's also knowing about when to stop. Um, okay, so these little um, droplets of paint are going to take just a little bit longer to dry. I am going to pop in a few of the greeny turquoise ones as well. Just very gently. I want to put these in early because they're going to influence where I paint other things. Okay. Okay, she says, and she keeps going. <laughs> right, going to let that dry 100% and then put some layers on. Now we've got a base layer dry, we can start to paint in the more concentrated layers on top. And I am going to do some of the pine needle branches that we've got here, very dilute. I'm going to do some of those over the top much stronger um, for, for a first sort of addition. So using my size zero brush, just nice and sort of random and, and jaggedy. And then getting my turquoisey green adding a little bit of French ultramarine in this time, I'm going to 
painting a bit more and this kind of pine comes out in tufts little fan shaped tufts rather than the type of fur that goes all the way along the branch like a sort of Christmas tree. And the cool thing about this is we can add in pine cones as well. So let's have a look at a simple loose watercolour pine cone. So I've got some Payne's Grey mixed up with my burnt sienna. And what I want to do is I'm just going to use the brush to create little sort of C curves coming into a sort of domed shape that all of a sudden there's a pine cone. We'll go through that again a few times because that's a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to move that up out the way and come around. So let's have another look at a pine cone. So I will do this one sort of facing into the wreath. So imagine, let's draw a little pencil shape. Imagine an egg, like slightly squat egg shape. And I'm just painting in little U shapes. And they're getting a little bit smaller, step by step. And then if we're gonna get to the top, they're really quite small by the time they get to the top. And it honestly is as simple as that. So I'm just going to go round and paint in some more of these pine needles and build up our next layer. The challenge of wreath painting is losing your way with getting a nice round shape. So what's nice about it is at each stage you've got chances to kind of pull it back and um, the filler which is the next stage where you choose something a little bit smaller to put in your wreath that you can dot about the place well that is going to be berries in this instance and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around the whole wreath and paint in plenty of lovely berries in amber and gold and red tones and my general approach with berries is to paint in circles with just a little bit of unpainted space. I quite like it if they touch as well. Because it just gives them a little bit of a shine. And you can sort of keep painting round and round until you've got a, a nice circle. It doesn't matter so much about how we're going to connect them, how they're going to sit on branches at this point. I'm just interested in evening out the circle of my wreath and making sure it's beautifully even. So I'm just going to go around painting clusters of berries here, there and everywhere. Now they'll they'll work really nicely on top of the um, on top of the very dilute first layer we put in, but they'll struggle to sit on top of the stronger colours. So the idea is you're going to weave them in and out of the stronger layer and 
and layer them up on top of the really dilute layer. It's so good to take a step back from a painting every now and then and just have a look at it as a whole because I thought I'd finished and actually I felt like when I looked at it a bit further away I just needed a little bit more there. Anyway, so we're going to finish off this wreath whoops, by adding a few little stalks to our berries and I've got a slightly bluier branch mix here and I'm not going to worry about sort of every berry having an obvious branch and a place but what I am going to do is just give each one a little bit of a sort of top like that and then simple little branch that sort of disappears off into the wreath. I've chosen to have everything going in the same direction for this wreath. Um, you don't have to do that at all. It could be going off in, in all directions if you wanted. And that's the beauty of the wreath. I must say this is the quickest wreath I've ever painted and I think from filling in with that dilute layer first really made all the difference to making it feel like it was full up. So if you're ever wanting to paint a quick Christmas card or, or a quick wreath, that's a really good technique. And there you have my Christmas wreath for this year. So a lovely sort of quite, I feel like it's quite a soft, gentle one. We haven't gone too all out with holly and ivy and things. It's just got a lovely warmth to it. And what I really like is those berries almost look like little baubles on, on our Christmas wreath. So happy holidays and I hope you enjoy painting this one. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one and maybe are inspired to create a Christmas card or two of your own. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, just hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell. Okay, until next time. Bye.